In this video, we will install the data collector. So just like the other installs, the first step is to extract the installer, but the data collector does not have its own installer. Instead, the installer is bundled inside the data aggregator server. We are on the data collector host right now, so the way we will extract the data collector installer from the data aggregator server is to use a REST call from the command line utility to extract the installer from the data aggregator to a temp directory on the data collector. This process, along with the other ways to get the installer, are detailed in the online documentation as well. We already have a temp directory created on the data collector, so to get the installer, we will need to use wget with minus p to the temp directory, and then minus nv with the rest URL to the data aggregator. The data collector installer is named install.bin, and if we look at the URL for the rest call, this is the host name of the data aggregator, this is the rest port we are using, and this installer.bin file we are extracting. We'll hit enter to get the file, and as we can see, it was very quick as it is a small installer. So next, we'll do a minus ALTR forward slash temp, and we can see we have the install.bin file. Next, we will change directories to the temp directory, and then execute the install.bin file. But it looks like we need to change the permissions, so we will need to open the permissions so we can execute the installer. And with the permissions changed, we can execute the installer. It is also good to note that usually all the install media is deleted from the servers after everything is done, so changing the permissions is not a security problem. So now for the change locale option, we'll choose English. Next is a quick introduction about running the installer, which is good to review. We'll press enter to continue to the next option, which is the license agreement. We'll accept the agreement. Next, the host evaluation runs, which verifies the host as having the right amount of memory, cores, and the available kernel. Everything looks good, so we can press enter. For the enter username option, we'll run this as the default root user, so we can press enter. For the choose install folder, this is the directory where the data collector will be installed. We will use the default install directory, so we'll press enter to accept the default directory, and the installer will run. For the configure maximum process memory, this is the memory for the data collector. There is no need to change the default unless there has been a specific reason or we have been instructed to do so by support, so we will accept this default setting. Next is the data aggregator host slash IP address setting. This field connects the data collector to the data aggregator, so we will copy the host name of the data aggregator from our text file and paste it into the option. The configure data collector for data aggregator fault tolerance option is next. We are performing a non-fault tolerant installation, so we will press enter to accept the default choice of no. Next is the associate data collector with the default tenant option. We are not configuring a multi-tenant environment, so we will press enter to accept the default tenant. The configure DX application performance management options provide the integration with APM. We are not integrating with APM in this demo, so we can choose the default option of no. Next, the pre-installation summary runs, and everything looks good, so we'll press enter, and the actual installation begins. And you will notice this is a very quick install. Also, one thing the installer does is associate the data collector with the data aggregator. The data collector installer is done, and the installation process was successful, so we'll press enter, and the installer will do its final cleanup, which wraps up the data collector installation. So at this point in the installation process, we have a data collector associated with the data aggregator a data aggregator associated with a data repository, and we have an independent DX NetOps portal server that is not yet associated with any of the three components yet, which we will do next. 